Okay, so in the last video, we looked a little bit at a few of the, the Unix commands that we can uh, manipulate the or work our way around in the file system of the Unix machine. And to do that, we're remote, remember, we're remote controlling the Unix machine from your home computer. So you're not issuing those, co those commands or any of the commands that we issue are not being issued on your own computer. Your machine is just sending the command to Newark and it's, it's executing in Newark. So I'd like to try and just do a, a quick video about uh, where I could maybe relate the Unix machine and its functionality with uh, the, with your window with a Windows machine. I think everyone knows is familiar with a Windows machine. So there's no sense in doing uh, a Mac machine separately, even if I could. I, I can't do it even if I could. But I think just by using the Windows machine and relating it to the Unix machine, we can see how the file system is similar in a number of different ways. So I'll start out by taking a peek at the Windows file system uh, using File Explorer. And um, from there, we'll jump back over to the Unix machine again to Copeland and, and see how uh, those, those two are, are similar, so the situations are similar. So here we are back on the Windows machine and we are in Windows Explorer or sometimes called File Explorer. Um, you can find that in your, your taskbar. It usually looks like a folder. You open up that and you'll see. Um, sorry, my, my cursor is not showing in this. I don't know why. I, I, I can't figure out how to get it to show. But you can see the highlighting happening. So I'm in the left hand pane right now, just highlighting some folders. Uh, so you can see the entire file system here from Windows or in Windows. And it really starts, even though it's been um, really abstracted, it starts with a Windows root of C. The C folder is the Windows root. So if I click that, it's a folder. It has a different icon on it because it's a special folder, but it's a folder. We'll see inside, these folders are all inside of that folder, right? So this folder is underneath and inside. So Intel is a folder that's inside the Windows C root folder. And so by clicking on that, what showed in the middle pane here was the contents of the Windows folder. So I can see the contents of the Windows folder both below it and beside it in this pane in the Windows Explorer. Whether I look down underneath of Windows or in this pane, I'm seeing the same, the same result. And the, it's the result of, of asking kind of the question, I do it with a command, or that command is issued on the Windows machine, on the Windows operating system. Um, by clicking on this, we use the mouse click, and it's understood <laughs> by the, the system that what well, we would like to see a listing of the contents of that folder. So we see it in the center pane. These are the folders that are inside of the C folder, okay? I'm sure you'll, you'll know that each of these folders have more folders in them. So these are the, the this first level here is the, the immediate descendants, I'll say, of the C folder. And then as we dig in deeper, we can, we can open up from this side. And then I can say, well, what's inside the Intel folder? I could do that anyway without even opening that. And then we can see that these two files are listed inside of the folder. These are files, uh, folders. I'm sorry, I called it a file. These are folders. Now there's some, there'll be some point in here where if we, for instance, if we click logs, we'll ask for the content, the contents of the folder called logs, which is a child of the Intel folder, which is in turn a child of the Windows C folder. So we see we have like a, a, what do they call it, a genealogy, a family tree here, kind of. And as we dig in deeper and deeper, these are children, deeper and deeper, children of, of the, the parent is the one up, the folder that contains the children. So these are not files. The contents of the folder, when I clicked on that, I asked Windows to show me the contents. Well, it's only shown in the left-hand pane. It only shows, Windows only shows, folders that exist in that folder. 
So in Unix words, that would be directories that are inside the logs directory. But in this case, there aren't any directories inside the logs directory. There are, so there's no, there's no folders in there, right? We see that there are only files. So files and folders, the point I'm trying to make here, that may seem obvious, but um, maybe not quite explicitly ever mentioned before, uh, files and folders are very different creatures. So when we ask to see the contents of a particular folder or directory, that folder or directory may contain both files and folders. And, and so far in, in this example, we're only seeing uh, folders contained inside of folders, or if I look inside of a folder I, like this one, logs, I will see only files in there. But that doesn't have to be the case. I could create another folder inside here if I want it. In Windows, I would right click, new, and folder. And as you see, I would, I would create a new folder. Now there's a new folder in here. There's five directories and files. They're two separate things. I cannot have two directories the same name. I cannot have two files of the same name. Um, and I can't have a directory and a file that are named the same. I don't believe that'd be an interesting thing to try. But I would say we shouldn't do it anyway. Even if it will let us, we shouldn't do that. That's nothing but confusing. So I'm going to, I'm going to now, I want to, that file I only put in here because uh, I was just showing that we can have both files and folders inside a folder, right? This folder called logs down here now contains both files and a folder. In Unix speak, files and a directory. Now, if I want to get rid of this directory, when I made this, that's equivalent to the Unix MKDIR, make directory, MKDIR. Now I want to get rid of it. In Windows, I'm just going to click delete. Uh, but in, and so in Unix, it would be RMDIR, remove directory. So MKDIR in Unix speak makes a folder or directory. RMDIR removes the directory. I want to see the contents of a particular file like Intel here. That listing over here, this listing is a directory listing. So I would want to use, an, I would want ls so I can see the contents list, ls, the contents of this directory. Now it makes no, no sense to, to ask for an ls on a file, right? The files we have to open up with another piece of software. Oftentimes it could be something like Word. We might use Word, a, a, a text editor of some sort to open a file. You, you don't open a folder, also known as a directory in Unix, you don't open a folder with Word, right? So this is what I'm, I'm trying to get at with uh, an understanding of the difference between files and folders. They operate differently, or we operate on them differently, I, I might say, instead. Okay, so ls is a simple listing of what the contents. If I want more detail in Windows, if you're on a Windows machine, you could attempt this, right click and properties. And that will bring up another dialog box. The fact that there's another dialog box is why I can't, why you can't see it. Because the recording software only does one window at a time. It won't do two. So another, another window came up on the context window and showed properties of the folder Intel. And I can see much, a lot more details here. And I, and I could see the permissions if I wanted. Right, they're they're available in here. Um, it's unfortunate. I'm going to go too long on this because you can't see it. But I can see the, the permissions on a Windows machine by doing a right click and and asking for properties. Now that's equivalent in, in Unix to do an ls space negative l. It's a long listing. We want to know more about the file or folder than just whether or not it exists. We want to know some details about it. Um, many times, in, in, as far as Unix is concerned, in, in our use of ls space negative l, it will be because we want to see the permissions. We want to know what the permissions are on the file. All right, let's pop over to a different location in my Windows directory structure. Uh, and I, I 
This is just somewhere else in my directory structure. And I have created a folder here called Sys101, my, my own folder Sys101 on my Windows machine. And in there, I've created that same directory, 06127, which is the number that is my home directory on the Unix machine, right? So you would have your own number, but that's your home directory on the Windows machine. So let's assume, or let's pretend, like this is my home directory on my Windows machine. And inside my home directory, I've clicked it. So that's like doing ls, right where I log in. If I do pwd, first off, let's do that one. pwd, present working directory, this is what I'll see. The full path to this location ending with my directory, my number here, right? And that, and the rest of it's all the full path, all, all the way to how to get to my directory from the Windows root, which is C. All right, so we see that up there in Windows. When I click the folder, I'll see the contents of that folder, right? So I'm asking for a listing, an LS, uh, it all, if I, when I use ls, I just get the ls of the pwd, just like in Windows. I, I, if I click this number right here, I'm not going to get the directory listing of anything else. Like whatever, what's, what's this? I don't know. I won't get that directory listing by, if this is the one that's highlighted, and I were to issue an ls, I'm going to see the contents of the, the selected or the PWD, the directory I'm currently working in, not some other directory like one of these that I'm not currently in. They exist in the system, but I'm asking for information relative to my present working directory, not some other directory. So LS gives me the contents of my PWD inside my home directory the contents, the only thing I have in there is public underscore HTML. I set this up just like the Unix machine is set up. So I can show you that precisely. It's the same. So in the Unix system, you'll see when you first log in, you'll be in your numbered home directory. You do an LS, you'll see public HTML, right? And you may also see mail. You may also have mail. Now, you know, on my, directory stru structure on the Unix machine when we lock, when we looked at it, I had a bunch of things in here. That's just because I, I've had this directory for a long time. I've had other things in it. Yours is, is brand new, so you don't have anything in yours yet. Uh, but it comes with public HTML, or needs to. We need to have that. And it may come with mail as well. All right? So then if I want to find out the contents of public underscore HTML, if I click it once here, I, I don't get anything, right? I first have to go into that directory. So the fact that it's highlighted is, is like it's making it the PWD, but it's still waiting for me to, to ask it something. So like, okay, you've made this the PWD, but what do you want from the PWD? And I'm kind of saying I want a listing of what's inside public HTML. So in order to do that, I have to not only select it, I, I have to double click it in the case of Windows to say, no, no, I actually want to open it up and see the contents, right? So in Unix, we would, from here, we would CD change directory, that's like there's my, that's my home directory, right? The number directory. I want to CD to public HTML and then do an LS and I'll get the contents. So I'm listing the contents of public HTML. I have in my directory here on my Windows machine at home, I have made two more direct, uh, folders. In Windows, I call them folders. In Unix, I call them directories. That's the way you should do it. So um, how do I make these directories in Unix? 
MKDIR space CISC 101 and I used uppercase CISC 101 and there's no space between the C and the one and then I did I enter and I do not receive any error message just like in Windows if I create a new folder and I don't do something wrong here let me do it new Oh, I, did, I did something else wrong there. Uh, new folder, here it is. New folder. Okay, this, the folder's created, right? NKDIR, and the new folder got created with a default name, new folder. Now let me try some, so I, it didn't tell me, good job, or it didn't say you did it right. Right, what, what happens in Windows, just like in Unix, is if you don't make a mistake, then the result just appears, it's just there. The fact that it exists now after you did it is the confirmation. It doesn't, the, the operating system doesn't need to affirm that you've done something correct. It only needs to respond when you do something incorrect. So let me make that happen here. New folder, and I'll try to do, I'll try to make a folder with no name whatsoever. Oh, you know what it did? It, it didn't allow it. Rather than, so it had two options it could do here, right, Windows. Windows could have either said, I, I'm not allowed to do that, error, and, and just abandon the operation, or it just names it itself, and what it, so that's what it does. It named it new folder and put a two next to it, so that I wouldn't have two folders named the same thing. So in Unix, it won't just assume that you mean to go ahead and create the folder anyway. Unix will take more of the position, well, um, the, the person or the, the entity here with intelligence is the operator. And it should be that either I do exactly what the operator wants or I produce an error message. Windows, on the other hand, leads you to believe that it knows what you want to do. And this puts people in kind of a funny position where you begin to think the computer kind of knows what you want to do. But that's just a programmer who came up with that notion to do that. Uh, the, the machine doesn't really know what you want to do. And in this case, it was wrong. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to see an error message. So it wasn't all that smart now, was it? It, it did the wrong thing. Didn't do what I wanted it to do. So, um, in any case, in Unix, had I done something like that, MKDIR enter, I would have gotten an error message that there's, I need to have a, a name for the file, well, for the folder. I can't, I can't create a folder without a name. So I should have said something like MKDIR space new folder, if that's what I wanted there. So now I'm going to, I'm going to RMDIR and I'm going to RM that one. Um, this one as well. I want to delete that one as well. Oh, I see what it's doing. All right. So we are going to want to do the same thing in the Unix machine. We'll log in. You'll log in to your home directory when we log when we do log in. You can do an ls. I hope that you see a, a public underscore HTML there now. That's what we should be able to see. We're gonna CD into the public HTML and do an ls. And you will see at this point you've not created the folders, right? So here, let's, if I keep going with this and I go, I double click and, and there's my LS, um, what does it mean? Well, it simply means that I, I haven't created a folder in there yet. But there's nothing there. That's all. That's all it means. There's nothing in this folder. So in your case, public HTML, when you do an LS, there won't be anything in there, right? So we'll have to create these two. So you would do MKDIR space CISC101 
I guess we're going to say or here, CISC, uh, MKDIR space CISC 103, enter, depending on the class you're in. If you're in SIS 101, make that SIS 101. If you're in 103, make that SIS 103. Let's, let's also do this. MK, well, we're, now we're going to, we'll, we'll just keep going like this. I was about to try some tricky stuff, some interesting, well, whatever, playing around. Uh, but we'll play around later after you start to get a little more comfortable with what we're doing here. So that's what you should have in your, in your uh, Unix um, directory structure. But let me, let me jump over to Putty and I'll show you the exact same thing over there. Okay, so here we are over at Putty. I'll do PWD because since I don't have all those icons like in, in Windows, I, I can't just visually see where I am in the whole system. I, I've got to ask, well, where am I? So PWD tells me my present working directory, the directory that I'm that's highlighted. All right, so I see it's my numbered directory. So if I do an LS, I'll see the contents of my directory. If I do an ls space negative l, then I'll see a long listing of the contents of the PWD. Mm -hmm. So what we're, what we're most uh, concerned with there or, or interested in are these permissions. Generally, uh, well, that didn't work. Uh, also, can you see my mouse on the screen? Yeah, you actually can see my mouse here. So everything over here is what we're usually looking for. When we do a, uh, an LS space negative L, it's because we want to see the permissions. And we'll understand why that is later. And they're easy to change, and we use CHMOD to change those, as we did in one of the previous videos. So PWD, where are we? I can do that whenever I want. PWD, enter. Now, if you have bash, if bash is showing as your command prompt, then push the, uh, or, or, or click the uh, up arrow key, and you'll get the last command that you did. This is why we wanted to, to make bash the shell. So let me do another one here, ls, enter. Now if I do one up arrow, you see my last command, and the previous command will be another arrow one. And then I did PWD like a couple times up there, right? And if I go on, it's got a list from a long time ago, from the last video, which would have been days ago, right? So it's keeping it's keeping all my commands in a list, a history list. So if I and then if I want to look, I want to come back to one of them, PWD, and I don't like the D, then I can use the backspace and modify it and S. Let's see, that's going to be a problem, right? PWS here. PWSA, that is not a command in Unix. So here's what happens when you type a command in that doesn't exist. The command is listed right here. Here's the command prompt, right? This is where you have typed in and the response comes back on a command prompt. And it, the response reads PWSA, command not found. So in other words, it has a list of commands that knows how to execute and you typed in something that's not on the list so it, it didn't find it on the list the operating system didn't so command was not found as something um, executable so this can happen in a variety of ways here I'll do it this way negative L now I did not use a space in there right so now instead of saying LS space negative L LS with the option L negative L I'm looking for the command for it to execute the command L, ls negative l all one thing. Command is not going to be found. Had I done it with a space between, I would have not got had that problem. Same thing with mkdi anything mkdir, and then I could use any name I want for the name of for the name. Can you guys see what I've done wrong here? I did something wrong. I'm going to hit enter. MKDIR, command not found. Well, I've been talking about MKDIR all, all along in this video. 
somehow magically now it's not found. Well, that's because capital M K B I R is different than lowercase m K B I R. And commands in Unix are lowercase. Let's do this. MK space D I R. Alright? As a human, you might go ahead and overlook that. MK space D I R. Oh, that human means MK D I R. Well, let's keep in mind that this machine does not think. So it can't do any such thing as this. I actually let me type it in there. I just want it to be M K D I R, right? Watch. There is no command MK space D I R. There is only a command MK D I R. There is no command that has a space between MK and D I R. And the computer cannot figure that out because it does not have brain cells. It doesn't think. So when you make a mistake like that, you leave the machine in a state where it doesn't know what to do and it just responds with an error message. Effectively saying, I don't know what to do here. I, I, don't, I don't know a command called MK space DIR. Now I'm, I'm actually giving it too much credit too because I'm, I'm, I'm speaking in its, <laughs> in its voice as if it's thinking and it's not thinking at all. It's just trying to pattern match. There is another pattern somewhere inside the machine where it's looking to understand how to do MKDIR, and that pattern is called MKDIR. And if you can't match that, it's not going to match it. it. It can't think that you might have meant something else. It doesn't have the intelligence to be able to do that. So that's one thing to keep in mind. When something's not working, you, you have to keep in mind that you need to be very precise about what you're trying to get this machine to do. And that might seem a little funny because in Windows it seems like it's not quite so sensitive. But the reality of the matter is it is that sensitive. It's just that a programmer has wrapped up a, a number of things in Windows to try and shield you or, or feign that the computer has some sort of intelligence, but it doesn't have any at all. So keep that in mind. Be careful when, when you get error messages, you want to look at them so you can kind of maybe try to understand what the error is. All right, at this point I've forgotten what we're even doing here, so, well, I already had something written in there. All right, this is where we are. We're, we're in PWD. Tells me where we are. Sometimes you can know where you are by the contents of the directory that you're doing listing of, and you know I did know that. But I, so I see that public underscore HTML there. We want to CD into that CD space p u b l i c underscore HTML, and that needs to be spelled precisely the same as the file that we see listed here. See, I, I see that right here what I'm trying to CD into the file, if I do, this needs to look precisely, exactly, no different than this one. And so this, here's an example, this is not the same as this. One of these things is not like the other. <laughs> They need to be the same. So if you have, now here this was created for us, but if we had created a file called public underscore HTML, all lowercase, then every time we've referred to that file name, we have to call it the same thing. If you have a child that you named John, you can't later start calling him Frank and think that John's gonna respond. I guess, I don't know if that's a good analogy or not, but at the, the level of, of intelligence that these computers have, it, it is kind of a good uh, analogy because they, they have none. They can't figure out, oh, that's what you meant. So let me get it back to a lowercase l and I hit enter. And nothing, look, nothing happened. Well, that's a good thing because if something had happened, 
it would have been a complaint. So it would have com been complaining that I did something wrong. If I use the up arrow key, there's that command that I, that I uh, issued. And here's the one I issued before it, and the one I issued before that. So I have my list of my commands, and I can use them, modify them, and run them again in modified state. Because the bash shell keeps the history, I cd it into public HTML. What do you think? If I want to see the contents of the PWD, which is now public underscore HTML, let's look at that. PWD, enter. You see, there's my home directory right there. And there was a folder inside my home directory called public HTML. I moved into that folder. And now if I do an LS, or if you do an LS, then, well, I can't just swap back just like that to that, can I? Maybe I can. Then watch, we'll do, uh, here, we'll swap right back to that. Then we would be in a situation here where I CD into Sys101 and nothing's in there. Well, because I created Sys101 and I didn't create anything in it yet. All right? So let's jump back to Putty again here. And we'll have the same situation. Oh, uh, well, LS, I'm going to do an LS. Let's look at what all's in here. In my public issue. Oh, I did create these two files already. These, that full. I did the Sys101. I did the Sys101. So I did it with an MKDIR space CISC101. You do the appropriate one, whether it's Sys101 or Sys103. You don't need both, but you could do both. Maybe you'll take the other class. So then I want to CD space CISC101. So I'm trying to say here, go into or open the directory CISC101 that I see in my present working directory. So now where's my PWD? My PWD is Sys101 because I CD'd into it. I changed my PWD directory to the Sys101 directory. I moved from public underscore HTML, you see up at the top there, public HTML, this was the contents, and then I CD'd into this one. So now I'm in, I CD'd into Sys101. So what my PWD, I guess that's what I was trying to show here, right? Let me jump back here again real quick. Um, boy, it gets a little complicated sometimes. So you see my PWD is listed right here at the top. I'm now, I'm in the Sys101 folder as my PWD, and in my Windows representation of this, there's nothing in it, right? That folder is empty. Okay, back to Putty. And how would I figure that out? What the contents are? See, our PWD is in fact Sys101. I want to see the contents of the PWD, so I have to issue the command ls. And nothing comes back. Just like this. Nothing came back, right? It's blank. So too is this one. LS is blank. So in order for me, what, what we know what we want to do, we want to, well, that was all we're going to do so far. Um, oh, let's do one thing. Or let's leave us with one thought, and then I'll, I'll pick it up in the next video. That way this video doesn't get, it's already getting kind of long, and I, I don't want them to be that long. <clears throat> so, I can CD into anything. Let, let's go back to the Windows machine so I can explain this maybe with Windows.
So when we were back here, public HTML, then I was able to, this is the LS, the part down here is the LS of public HTML. So I was able to CD into Sys 101 here because I could see it right here in the LS, right? The results of the LS. But now, how do I get back to public HTML? See, I have nothing here in the results of the LS to double click to get that one. So in Windows, I can't go to the parent of the PWD, the PWD being Sys 101. I'm back up at this area up here. Sys 101 is the PWD. Public underscore HTML is the parent of the PWD. So in order to get to the parent of the PWD up one level in this tree, I have to do something else in Windows. I have to do it up here. Or I'm going to have to get it from the sidebar, right? Well, somehow or other. The point is, the parent of the PWD is not in the listing of the PWD, so I can't directly CD into it. Right? So in Windows, it's done by clicking the next one up in this bar. Next one up. Right? And then I don't, from this bar, I can't go use that bar anymore. I now have to go back in here and work with it. Right? So there's something similar going on in Unix. So I'm in Sys 101. I've done an LS. There's nothing in there. I want to get to public underscore HTML. And public underscore HTML here is the parent of Sys 101. So I want to go to the parent of the PWD. So I still want to use CD. Oh, yeah, I'm going to show it to you right here. I'm going to use LS negative A. So the negative A switch is going to show me all files, including hidden files. And we see dot and dot dot are in there, right? That gets returned, dot and dot dot. But we don't see them on a regular LS because they're hidden. The dot dot is important because it's a pointer that points up to the parent of the PWD. So I can CD into it. CD space dot dot. Enter. And now I should be in the parent of the PWD, where the PWD is Sys 101. The parent of the PWD is public underscore HTML. So let's see, if I do PWD now, I should be in public HTML, right? And we see that I am, in fact, in public HTML. I went up one. If I did it again, CD space dot dot, I'll go to the parent of the PWD, where the PWD, right this second, is public underscore HTML. I'm going to issue this command requesting that I go to the parent of the PWD. I want to move up to 016, blah, blah, blah. And then I'll do PWD. And there I am. In my PWD now is 06127. So I've moved up to the parent of the PWD. Then I could do an LS, enter. I can see Sys 101. So because CISC 101 and 103, there's 103. Oh, I guess I don't have a Sys 1. I thought I had a Sys 101 here. Okay, so clearly I, I have Sys 103, not Sys 101. That's interesting. So I thought I had a Sys 101 in here as well. I'm, you know what? I must be thinking about the Windows machine, where I have both a Sys 101 and a Sys 103. So see the. CISC 103. Yeah, let me ask you something. Will that work? Is this going to work? Oh, I know exactly what's wrong here. Something else. I'm in my home directory. 
we built those directories, Sys101 or Sys103 or both, in public HTML. It so happens that I also have a Sys103 outside of public HTML. So this is like my own kind of private Sys103 stuff. Everything inside public HTML should be public, right? So our web server is going to serve from that directory. So I would have to CD, here, let me show you another trick while we're at it. P-U-B, and then I'll do an asterisk. So the asterisk is a wildcard and will match any number of characters. In this case, following the characters P-U-B. P-U-B and anything else. Now I can use that asterisk in lots of different strategic kind of ways. I could have P-U-B star HTML and that would be, I would be saying, I would like to CD into some folder that starts with P-U-B, whose name starts with P-U-B and ends with HTML, and it would still match the same directory. So let's do it. See, no, no complaint, right? So it must be okay. P-W-D, and I'm in public underscore HTML. I did it through the star. Now I would have, no, I wouldn't have used the star that way. I would have just said P-U-B star. So actually that would have been a problem is looking at my directories here. For me, that would have been a problem, not for you, because I have a public directory and a public HTML directory, right? So I would have confused the machine. There would have been ambiguity. There are two different folders that start with PUB. So the only one that would work for me if I want to use that star would have been what I did, PUB star HTML, or I could have done P star L. If I look around, I wouldn't have matched anything else, right? P. That's that's a command. Yeah, I wouldn't have. There wouldn't have been any ambiguity. Here, I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. Man, this video is getting long. Let's make sure we are. Okay, so we're there where we're supposed to be. LS, enter. So I want to CD into public underscore HTML, but I want to use the asterisk so I don't have to type the whole thing out. I do have to type CD, P star, or asterisk, L. There should be no other directory in that list of directories that I just listed that starts with a P and ends with an L. No complaint. And we see that I am in public underscore HTML. So we learned a lot more about MKDF CD, CD space dot dot. Well, we learned about CD space folder name. And we learned about CD space dot dot. No matter where we are in the directory structure, if we just do cd, cd enter, we'll go home. So I'm back in my home directory. I was in public underscore HTML. I'm now back in my home directory. And that, so cd enter, cd by itself, will always bring us back to our home directory, no matter where we are in the file system. It's kind of like uh, clicking your heels. <laughs> and then you just go back home. So we're going to CD, CD space dot dot, CD space file name, MKDIR. Um, we learned about the, the asterisk. Uh, we know LS. We know PWD. We know LS space negative L. And we also saw ls space negative a. And you can do, by the way, since we've done both of those, you can do ls space negative la. You can do a long listing of all files, including hidden. So l and a can be independent, or you can combine them uh, with the ls command. <clears throat> 
MKDIR. We didn't do um, RMDIR, but it works the same way as MKDIR. So if you're trying to delete a, a directory, RMDIR space directory name, the one that you're trying to delete, just like MKDIR space directory name created the one. So we created Sys103 or Sys101 with MKDIR space Sys103. We could delete it if we wanted to get rid of it. And it has to be visible on an LS, but uh, MK, uh, RMDIR CISC103. Okay, this is way too long. So I'm gonna cut it off here and we'll try to move forward with some more getting around in Unix. I do believe, here, help me switch back to something else here. I, I do believe we're, I don't know, maybe I could say we're uh, half halfway, at least halfway through all the commands that we need. So if these are starting to make a little bit of sense to you, then we're really getting close. I know it all is weird because it's something that you've never, you've seen maybe in a movie, but um, you've never been, you've never used anything like this. It's all new to everyone. There's always a great deal of uncomfortableness um, while, while we're just starting to get going with this. So just, just hang in there. We're, we're, we're like halfway through all the commands that you need to know, and this will become second nature. It always does every semester. It's always very sketchy feeling in the beginning, but after a, a short period of time, it won't even take that long. You'll be comfortable with this and, um, and then we can start actually building websites. We'll do one uh, soon. I think we'll do our first page, maybe the next video. Let me think about it for a second. I'll see if I can do another video tonight. All right, that's, that's it for me.